So welcome back to another video. Here's today's sketch that we're going to do. It's from my uh, sketchbook. Uh, this one was done back in 2018. It's of uh, the water tower at Sandringham in Norfolk. Uh, I mean, you say we've got a grey cast iron tops there. Um, there's shadows we can see. Burnt Sienna building. The light's coming from this direction. Um, greens in here, spring green, a few distant trees, ploughed field. Yeah, this will be fun. So I'm going to get on with the sketch, putting it onto the paper, and then we're going to use that as a source for our painting. So I'm going to be sketching with a 6B pencil, and we're going to be using a squirrel mop brush medium-sized round brush another round brush much smaller one for detail the details of all these um, actual brushes are in the description as is this Bockingford pad and today we're also going to be using this full of water I'm going to clean that water out um, in the collapsible lantern so let's get on with it so here we go we're going to pop in um, some clear water around the back of our water tower coming down carefully nice pointed edge on the squirrel squirrel mop we're going to keep the sky really simple um, we're just going to the basic blue sky why? because there's a lot going on here and, we, and it's a small painting we just want to keep it nice and straightforward so we're going to pop in some cerulean keep it a nice light cerulean sky I'll probably pop in a bit more pigment over the side to balance it up a little bit and then we're just going to design it down dropping down slightly behind that foliage here bring in the middle size round brush just drop in some raw sienna in here you know, have that as the underpainting as well that nice and liquidy just pop it in here and then we'll decide as we go along what we're gonna do that so that's stage one done and we're going to leave that to dry and then we'll move on to the next stage stage two so here we go with stage two and um, we're gonna we're gonna work on uh, just the background here can I just pop in a Just some distant, distant trees in there, and we're gonna just leave them to do their own thing. Just, just design this in here a little bit. Uh, that will do. I'm not gonna mess around with that too much. And then they'll just blend and bleed in here. some of that liquid with a rather dry brush so just to make another line of distant trees in the background there yes that will do us sort of thing and then we'll think about some of these spring sort of trees and hedgerows here just bear it in mind we've got the building there we'll just put in this first little wash of color just green make sure we've got some of the underpainting that's underneath it shining through but we don't need to be too too precise that's that I'm gonna 
leave that. This is all nice and dry. It says on my note to soil field, which is interesting. Let's do a soil field then. Make sure we keep some of the underpainting in there. water and to take out that to make sure that as we go the eye goes back we've got lighter tones otherwise I'll just pull everything in a lot closer than we want it that's a little correction there which is going to be okay remember water's about watercolour and this is what we're doing loading up the brush with some clear water Finer brush, just take out. It's quite dry. The brush, take out some suggestions of lines coming in here. Sometimes I'll scrape this through with my fingernail like this, just to show some of the tracks. You can never do it though. some underpainting. Remember to join the shapes up near the base. Under, so when I say underpainting I mean underneath it the painting um, colours are there, the light shining through. If I just block that all out into one big block you just wouldn't have the little sky holes that you get out in nature. dry this off before we move into the next stage. So that's nicely dry and we're going to move in now to the next stage. In our notes it says there's a burnt sienna building but we need to make sure this is quite light so we need to be careful on that one. Let's get some burnt sienna, sort of brick colour, very indicative and traditional for, for um, this part of Norfolk. as well. Brick buildings here. There we go. That's that done. We'll bring the shadows in afterwards. So it's using this mid, medium, medium size, middle size. round brush there. So that's that bit. I might actually use some of that to spray in across here. Just to join that up a little bit. Just quick light strokes. And a touch of water on the edge just to blend that in. Paint it back over some of the colour. 
this is dry, we're going to go in with the darker tones now. And with this I'm going to use a slightly different technique, you've seen me do this before, kind of smash the end of the brush now. So it's kind of splayed like this to signify kind of leaves coming through on foliage. And it also gets the underpainting popping through as well. it a bit. Don't need to go too nuts here. It's just a sharp and note. We've got some blurred passages here. And this is just showing the sharper edges. It's going across the front of this building as well. It just puts that in this place. This place is behind. That'll do. We'll work on the um, some of these trees coming out early spring. Remember, go with a quite a dry mixture of this um, burnt umber coming out. Hopefully, you can see that. I mean, my hand gets in the way sometimes. Too mad. I'm just going to go in slightly more detail. Just get some finer bits in there. On the original, that goes up quite high here. Have to be careful not to overdo it. Just popping out. There's two or three in there. I've one come off the side of the page. Look, coming in. Now, for some strange reason, my um, recording equipment just stopped, so we missed a few bits. So I'll just recap, I've just popped in with some um, burnt sienna, burnt umber rather, uh, some some of these brown notes of uh, branches. We popped in some little detail here next to the tower, some trees there, and these uh, telegraph poles. Um, then I just popped in a light wash there to join up the telegraph poles they needed to be joined so you know otherwise they would just look like they were standing up in midair and we don't want that and then I've popped in a few more of these dry brush lines um, just to suggest the field now we just need to check that this is all dry because we're getting near the end now the final stage gonna mix up some of my favorite shadow color which is the glycerin crimson Mixed up with the whoa, strong ultramarine blue, so that's a very cool colour there. I think we'll take some of that out. Let's just tidy up this part of the palette quickly. Take some of this liquid, pop it in there, get some more water, and just warm this up a little touch. Pop in straight in. Now I need to check that this is dry. It's not quite dry. 
these are dry. So I'm looking at my original sketch and we had the shadows straight in there, so that's good. And there's a shadow down the side here. So that's that one. And there's a little bit of shadow in here. So we'll leave that. Um, a little weird shadow there. Straight down there with that one. And some foreground shadows. Again, the light is coming in from this direction. It's going to come across here. We'll just pop in some shadow there. Make sure we keep the light on this shadow color. We'll pop again, warm that up with some burnt sienna and some crimson again. Get some water. Just fade out some of this. Just clear water. So we don't want all the shadows to be sharp. I have some of them blurred. Pop in just a touch of shadow colour in here. Just drop in in some. Not much. Just there. That'll do. Just blur that off a bit. Otherwise they look like blobs. So the final thing. I said we'd finished last stage, not true, a little bit more, was I'd actually, uh, when the paint was much drier, I just scratched in a few of these lines with my fingernails, um, which is there, and I've also noticed a, a two or three little kind of marks, which is a bit weird, um, just kind of painting drops and blobs really, I'm just going to quickly turn those into crows or something flying in there. So we've got a detailed brush. Is you need to make sure you've got them all different angles, different distances from each side, different sizes as well. Just makes it look a bit more realistic. Let's just sort this one out. That's it. So we're now going to finish off by taking off the tape. Yeah, to the ta-da moment and revealing what's underneath. A nice border. There we go. Hopefully you enjoyed that one and you can follow that along and paint along as well. Got a bit of a mess there. Whether we can sort that out and make it worse. Let's just see. Probably make it worse. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. As we say, take care, subscribe, like, comment. Remember to ring that bell. And I'll catch you next time.